All right, so on your back body, uh, find where your strappy went or your towel went or whatever you have, whatever you were playing with. I know it might be somewhere else you kind of have to lift up and get it, but <laughs> we weren't ready for our full rest anyway, right? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna work with our legs. Uh, option here to, um, we're gonna work with our right leg first. It's gonna go long and we're gonna use the towel for it. So you can either have the left leg bent and the foot on the ground, or the left leg can be long on the mat. And you might try both versions. But whenever you're ready, you're gonna take your uh, right knee, bend big into it so you can bring your foot to where the strap can meet it. And then once you get that, uh, um, you're on your backside too, sorry. Once you get that in there, try to play dead with the leg and you're gonna create movement with just the strap. So you might pull and tug at the strap left or right to turn the hip in and out. You'll see the toes kind of turn in and out. You might draw little circles. We're envisioning that our leg is immobile. We're gonna go soft in that hip connection there and try to move around through it. You can take a bend into your knee, you can decide to go long-legged. If your leg helps a little here and there, and there's some muscles firing, that's okay too. These are just different options for you. You can go across the body, open up to the side, get creative with it. If one of those positions felt nice to give you a little extra stretch into, then for the next few moments, you might hold, breathe into it. And then we're gonna take a moment to switch. So if your legs, uh, if your leg that you weren't holding onto was long, then bring your other leg along with it. And if the leg that you weren't holding onto was bent knee, then bent knee, just so they match, they meet up for a moment. You get to assimilate that action for that first side. And then you get to move into your left. So big bend in the knees, you can strap hold onto that left foot. And then right leg can be long or it can be bent and planted foot onto the mat. The same thing, take a moment to let the muscles in the legs, the hip flexors, the inner and outer thighs to feel useless. <laughs> Arm is gonna take motion and move around. I'll let you know it's virtually, almost virtually impossible to actually not have your muscles help you. <laughs> but we're trying to ask them to help way less. We get a little bit more freedom and rotation in that hip as you're crossing the body or reaching up. And then if one spot along the way felt like a good stretch, then hang out there for a breath or two. Let whatever needs to lengthen, lengthen. And then you'll work your way back to center. You can let go of the foot, the leg, the towel, all that. And you can just set uh, it next to you. And then take a moment to draw the knees in towards the chest. And we actually get to activate a little bit of our muscles. So as you're pulling your knees towards your chest, create a little wall with the hands and then push the knees back into the hands, into the palms. Or if you're gripping underneath, yeah, if you're gripping underneath your thighs, um, then same, same. You're pulling the thighs towards you, but then you're gonna push the backs of the thighs into the palms. So it's like you're trying to resist the squeeze with the knees into the chest. 
And then soften, rock and roll around. We're gonna take a little uh, side, uh, side, uh, I want to say cross, cross body stretch. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Not so much side body. Um, so come uh, onto your back, long leg, and you're, you're letting the legs spread a little bit apart. And you're going to take your right arm. You're going to reach it across towards the left. And you might take that left arm and create a pillow as you roll over. And it's just the upper body that rolls over. So you might be on the left edge of your left foot and then the right big toe is down. And here's an option. So the right leg is on top, reach it a little bit further back behind you. And your right arm's on top and then reach across like you're an X. So from your right toes to your right fingertips. If I looked overhead, you'd be like a little X. Similar to that, similar to that reach that we did earlier, but now we're in a little bit of a twist here. You might even go back to that uh, heel like it's pushing into a button action. And then if you reach your leg a little bit or a lot of it behind you, you might bring it back to center a little before you roll back over onto your backside. And then we take this twisty lengthener on the opposite side. So left arm is the one that reaches across you. And it's just like the shoulders want to roll over. And you might bring that right arm underneath the head or it can just stay where it's at underneath you. You'll roll over to right pinky, left big toe side foot. And then if you want to, you can take that left leg up on top and reach a little bit further back behind you and extend through the left fingertips. So your X now from left heel toes to left fingertips. And then either stay here with the more delicate twist and reach or flex into the toes, the heel, push that button underneath your heel, reach for the button at your fingertips. And then if you reach pretty far back with your left leg, you might bring it back towards center a little and then roll it back over. All right, bend to the knees. Take a few rocks up and down the spine, left and right. If you prefer to come to your side in order to come upright and seated, that's fine too. Nice. <laughs> We're all getting up to our bottoms. And then whatever leg crossing you chose, flip it and reverse it. So my left leg always wants to stack on my right. So I'm gonna take my right leg and stack it on the left. Um, you could be doing something symmetrical too. Maybe you're in a uh, butterfly leg pose, I don't know. All right, take your left hand, reach it towards the floor. And then let your fingertips rotate behind you like you're trying to point to the wall behind you. And then reach that arm back. And then take your left ear, not only towards your left shoulder, but a little bit forward. So if you're drawing a line from your fingertips through your ear, it would be one long line. So your chin should be pointed a little bit more towards your right collarbone if that helps. You might draw little circles with your fingers while you're here, one way or the other. And then take your time getting your head back uh, to center. No need to rush it. Just bring it on back, and then the arm can come back too. 
And then we take it to our second side. So left palm rests next to us. Fingertips start to point behind us. And then our arm, our whole arm kind of reaches back a little behind as well. And now our right ear is gonna go towards our right shoulder, but also in front so that our chin is pointing towards our left collarbone. One long line from fingertips through the neck and ears. And then slowly the head comes up, the arm comes around. And then take a couple of shoulder rolls, forward, back, forward, back. All right, we're gonna generate some movement for our shoulder blades. So those are those nice flat, slabby bones on the back side of your body. And we're going to start with the right shoulder blade. So um, you can leave your left hand wherever it wants to go, or you might bring your left palm to that right shoulder, just so you can see and feel a little bit more what's going on. And you're going to take your shoulder blade and let it slide up towards the ceiling. And then you're going to let your shoulder blade work in towards the midline. So it's reaching towards your spine. Your shoulder blade sliding over towards your spine. And then you're gonna pull your shoulder blade down like it's going into your back pocket. And then you're gonna pull your shoulder blade away from your spine. So it's working towards the side. And then one more in this direction. So shoulder blade comes up. Shoulder blade works in towards the spine. It pulls down towards your pocket. And then it pulls open like a sliding door. And then we're gonna reverse it. So the shoulder blade goes down into your pocket. It's gonna work towards your spine. It's gonna come up. And then it's gonna slide away from your spine. And then one more round down into the pocket. In towards your spine, up, out, and then let it go. If that was tough, if that was challenging, it's supposed to be. <laughs> Moving your shoulder blade is a tough one, um, but it kind of gives you a clue into how your shoulders are feeling. Same for the other side. So rest the arm, the left arm will let ease, right arm can go wherever it wants, or it can touch the top of your shoulder to give you a little bit more clue of what's happening. And then the shoulder blade comes up. Shoulder blade is gonna slide in towards the spine. It's gonna pull down towards your pocket. Out to the side, this is the tough one. All oh, mine doesn't wanna go anywhere. <laughs> Goes back up. Pulls back in. Pulls down. And then we get to reverse, two times second direction. The shoulder blade comes up. It's going to pull away from you. It's going to come back down to your pocket. Pulls into the spine. Comes up. Pulls out and open. Pulls down. And then you can let it go. Maybe shake and do a little roll. If you're like, Valerie, I didn't feel my shoulder blades move at all. <laughs> Something to work on. <laughs> you want to keep those shoulder blades supple. <laughs> all right, hands and knees. And we've already been here today. If you're re-watching this and you haven't been here, maybe take a few rocks form back or side to side. If this is your second round of class. Maybe you move uh, three-legged. So you can remove a palm as you're shifting around. Move the other palm and shift around a little bit. Notice how that's just even a wee bit different when you do three-legged movement. And 
And then one of my favorite uh, poses to do, because it just has so much potential, uh, threading the needle. So from your table position, um, you can even walk the palm, the left palm a little bit forward so it's uh, not directly underneath your shoulder. That gives you a little bit more room, honestly. Reach the right arm up, open to a twist. And then you're gonna slide it under the left, set the arm and shoulder down. And what I mean by so much potential is it can be a draping onto the floor from here. It can be a big spinal twist for you. You can activate through the shoulders by pressing whatever side of your palms are into the ground, gripping at the mat. You can let the hips go a little bit more askew here. You can try to keep them centered and even. There's so much goodness for this pose. Whatever you're up to, find room for the breath. Find your ins and your outs. We're gonna come into the opposite side. So find your unwind. Place the palm down, push back up. Find your center to a, for a moment. And recognize you might feel a little different. And when you're ready, switch your side by opening up left Placing under right, lay it on down. This could be a similar adventure for your second side. You might be allowing a lot of rest, or you might be actively moving, pushing pulling, lifting in your own ways. Find your way up and out of your twist. Come back to your table. And then lower down onto your belly. You might do that from the knees. You might come to a plank, but we're all coming down to the belly. And choose how you want to use um, the arms. They could palm, palm stack to bring the forehead down. They could be at your sides and you could have a left or right cheek. We're gonna allow this chest down movement here to breathe a little bit more into the back body for a couple of rounds. So as you inhale, let the back ribs expand and lift towards the sky. So it's like you're sending your air a little bit more to the back body than the front. And hopefully being pressed down chest and torso allows the air to push a little bit more into those back ribs, the spine. And start reconnecting. Start letting the wind down happen a little bit more. Lengthening those exhales, you're allowing the heart rate to come down. And 
Well, it's your choice if you want to stay in this position for your rest, if you would like to flip onto a side, if you'd like to be on your back. Even spend your last few moments here, just moving a little. But recognizing it's almost time to settle in, to let go. Did a lot of work today. Some novel things, a couple of familiar things. When we move the body in these ways, we get to sort of wring out or cleanse. It gives us room for finding the thoughts. It gives us room to prioritize what's left in front of us is usually the most valuable. Let go of the superfluous. Bye. See you later. It gives us a chance to learn too about ourselves. Find your way into whatever resting position you would like to end in. Of course, you're free to keep moving and then finding your own rest after a little bit longer. Often the ins and the outs. Let the universe breathe you in, let go. And rest at ease for as long as you're able to. Thank you all for sharing your beautiful practices with me this evening. And may the rest of your week be just as wonderful.